I am Terry Charles, uh, Deputy Relief Coordinator for NADMA, and this is Mr. Elvis Young, uh, Chairman of the Relief Committee. What we are doing here this morning, basically, we are doing a quick dispatch of some supplies to Karakou. I must say again, it's a quick response to Karakou because of the situation where we do not have much information on the ground. A team of personnel is going up um, to do the various assessment, but in the meantime, we just we just gotten some stuff and we're sending a quick response stoppling food stuff to Karakou. As we progress during the day and get the feedback, the, uh, the, the whole relief operation for Karakou and for the other parts of Grenada is going to be spelled out to the nation. Uh, in the meantime, yes, start doing what you need to do and just await the call from us and we will keep you informed. My, my colleagues sum it up. Um, the relief effort started yesterday. Um, well, not yesterday, two days ago. We had some relief to centers two days ago. Yesterday, we had some relief to the General Hospital and to Mongi Hospital. And today, we're focusing on Kariku. Um, we also plan another session, another relief session um, for the hurricane centers. So from this operation here, we will be heading back to headquarters to organize relief for the shelters. The public is eager to find out how long would that process take. Once you're loaded, it's a one, a, one and a half. How soon would you get to Carrico? Um, well, let me see. I think what we're using now is fishing boats, right? Um, Osprey... The, the big Osprey usually take about an hour and a half, the smaller one maybe about two hours. The fishing boat I expect would be a bit slower, so I would say three and a half to four hours. That's my estimate. Kariku, we're coming, we're coming. Expect relief supplies, you would see that today. Um, I know it's pretty early because it's a swift response. Can you indicate to us what corporate sector you may have had deliveries from so far? Um, so far is Huggins, yes. Um, the tarpaulin that we're working on is from the Red Cross. I should also add that although the tarpaulin was requested, the Red Cross also chipped in with an additional 50 tool building kit for the effort. So um, I really, really want to give Ms. Dixon and her staff. My name is Natalie Bruce and I'm the chairman of the Spice Isles Billfish Committee. Um, can you give us, you know, just a, your sentiments in terms of responding to the needs of the people on the system? Um, well, this is a very, very serious situation. And, you know, together with the people of Grenada, we just want to support and assist our family and friends in Carico and Petit Martinique. As far as you're concerned, your family, your parish, your sort of immediate community, everyone, people are safe? Yes, yes, everyone is safe, yes. Clinton Bailey, uh, Bailey's funeral home, but today I'm acting with a different hat. I am just here volunteering to get stuff, relief stuff to Karaku and Pretty Martinique as quick as we could. Um, I am involved with boating, as a lot of y'all know, I do a lot of fishing. So what we have done, um, we, we were asked to try to mobilize the, the boats to carry stuff right now. We have the big boats that will be here by today and tomorrow. Um, but we need to get stuff to Karaku right now and Pity Martinique right now. So this is what we are doing. We had some volunteers that own boats. They, I called them last night. They are all here. One boat left already. We are loading um, two or three other boats. This boat also, Embassy, it has just volunteered to go. So we are trying to give relief to the people because we know what has happened to us in Ivan, so we know what they are going through. So this is our effort today. Lyndon from the Youth Emergency Action Committee. I'm from Sertes, but based in um, Grandlands. Uh, we are trained in many fields, and this morning we get a call to come and assist to get stuff to go up Karaku, and we are out here. Well, we're still waiting on some others to respond, but due to the internet problems, we can. So we're out here willing and ready to help. Um, your sentiment in terms of responding to this call and to the needs of the people of Karikou and putting your training into action? Well, it's been a while since I've been active and this morning make me feel energetic and ready to go. 
All right, well, my name is Fimba Thomas. I'm not representing an organization, but um, I work with the government of Grenada and I'm volunteering here today. Um, I understand the situation. I'm, I wasn't here for Ivan, so um, seeing as this has been my first um, hurricane, I'm here to give my effort and give my best to make sure that people of Karaku, you know, get help. So today we are loading up some stuff, some food stuffs, some tin stuffs, water to send to Karaku so we can help the folks who, you know, had got the damages in Karaku. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to hear, hear to serve. I'm happy to serve. Good afternoon, Grenada, and thank you for joining us for this afternoon's brief, where we will give you some updates on Karaku, the Princess Royal Hospital, and some updates on our relief efforts. We are coming to you live from the National Emergency Operations Center at the NADMA headquarters. Joining me this afternoon is the National Disaster Coordinator, Dr. Terence Walters, his uh, Deputy Coordinator, Mr. Philip, Mr. Arthur Pay, and the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sean Charles. We will begin with some updates from uh, Mr. Pay, so please, uh, you may proceed. Good afternoon, uh, sorry, good evening, Grenada. Uh, just to give you just some brief updates, uh, we have increased our relief um, distribution efforts and relief supply effort, efforts uh, to, to Karyaku. There are a number of vessels have gone to Karyaku um, and they are delivering much needed items uh, like tarpaulin water, food items, um, some medical supplies um, to Karyaku. We have not forgotten um, the parish of St. Patrick, St. Andrew, St. Mark's, and, and some of the other parishes like St. George's, St. John's, and St. David's. Uh, our focus really and truly locally in terms of Grenada is St. Mark's, St. Patrick's, and St. Andrew's. Um, I, even as we speak now, trucks are being loaded to send items uh, so that persons that would, would get, especially our shelters, we still have a number of shelters open, uh, approximately 20 shelters open with about 407 persons there. So we are providing um, items for them to, alle uh, to, to alleviate some of, the, some of the, the issues that they do have. We want to really, really, truly thank the Grenadian public. I, I, I am driven almost emotionally <coughs> to because of the, the, the overwhelming uh, contribution and the, the overwhelming gifts of love in terms of food items and all of that that have been coming in uh, for persons um, in Grenada and for persons in Karakou. We also want to thank a number of our fishing vessels that are making trips to Karakou, voluntary, um, really and truly just reaching out and dropping stuff up, off at um, Karakou for, for relief items. Uh, Right now, I, I understand that there are about nine shelters open still, okay, not the 20 years before. So it means that persons are actually going back home and, and they, they are recovering. And we are trying to deal with some of the needs that families have expressed um, in some of the parishes. Now, we are just saying that even though you may not receive items as yet, be patient. Um, the persons here, volunteers, at NADMA uh, Warehouse are working very, very hard uh, to ensure that these items are actually delivered to the communities, the, the various parishes, the various houses and families um, out there. So I want to say thank you so, so very much for all, uh, all that um, have been done and all that continue to happen. Um, 
thank you for the energies. Thank you for just your service uh, for what, you know, really and truly in this relief effort. Um, we are making some appeal right now um, for trucks. We are, we are in dire need of trucks to be able uh, to deliver these items more efficiently, more effectively, and on a timely basis. So what we are asking you to do is um, get in touch with NADMA, give your name, your telephone number. We would call you, um, and we would arrange to see how you can come in and get, get relief items out to our various parishes here locally. Uh, there is need, again, for persons, um, oh, sorry, there are a lot of requests for persons to actually visit Karakou, all right? Let me just say that we don't necessarily want too many persons going to Karakou because, of course, when you go to Karakou, we don't have the support that you may have up there um, to assist to assist in, in, in response, and we don't want persons to go up there and we have to take care of you. There's all the, the resources there is already stretched, persons are already stretched, so we don't want persons to go up there. If you are going up there and you make your own arrangement, please note that you will have to take care of yourself. You will have to take care of yourself. So we are saying, um, we're, not, we're not really encouraging persons to just go visit Karakou. We know that they, there is requests for help and assistance, and we want to be able to do that in a controlled and manageable way. All right? So again, let me just say thank you so very much. Trucks, truckers, um, we are asking you to just provide your name so we can reach out to you and tell you when to come and how we could uh, um, schedule uh, the use of trucks for the delivery of um, relief items here in Grenada. Over to you. Thank you, Mr. Pear. We want to hear from Dr. Sean Charles. Uh, you spoke earlier about the Princess Royal Hospital. Could you give us an update on that, please? Um, thank you very much, and uh, good evening, all. Um, I'll, I'll, not only, I'll, I'll not just um, speak about Princess um, Royal Hospital. Um, I'm going to speak about Karikou in, 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 in general. Um, Karikou and Petit Martinique, because these are the two um, sites where the country experienced the most sig um, significant um, impacts from um, Hurricane Beryl. Uh, as it relates to Karikou and Petit Martinique, um, five out of the six health facilities that we have um, suffered significant damages. This included the Princess Royal Hospital which um, experienced uh, the, a loss of the sheeting to over 75 percent in my estimate of the roof. Um, this rendered the facility um, basically unusable. Uh, at present the services are now being delivered from the Hillsborough Health Center which is the, the health center that was able to um, withstand uh, the, 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 um, well, the intensity of um, Beryl's um, assault on the, on, on the island. That facility um, thankfully fared very, very well. Um, in terms of physical damage, um, it's basically um, limited to the loss of the solar um, water heater on the roof and maybe some minor um, cos um, cosmetic um, issues. So the services will continue, the health services will continue to, to um, function from the Hillsborough Health Center. Now, something of, uh, that, that, that is significant and must be noted, uh, from yesterday we visited um, Kariuku to uh, assess the situation that is, uh, that is occurring there. And from all of the staff members that we encountered that, is, that are providing health services, they all suffered significant damage to their homes. The, um, the majority, or if not all, um, lost the roofs of their homes. But they continued to provide services um, despite the tremendous challenges that they are experiencing. And this is remarkable. It's a, it, it, it's, it's a remarkable effort on their part um, to continue the functioning, to continue the delivery of health services um, um, to the island um, despite the challenges. Now, the Ministry of Health 
is exploring all avenues to bring additional relief to carry a coup. Um, one of the major challenges we have, we have, uh, we have quite a number of healthcare professionals who are who have volunteered their time and are willing to um, travel to carry a coup to um, to offer services. However, similar to what Mr. Pierre um, just mentioned, the challenge is, the challenge that we have is one of the lack of accommodation. We are working. Um, we are looking at, at, at every um, option that we can explore to ensure that, um, you, you know, there, that we can find um, spaces where we can, we can um, accommodate these individuals so that they can provide some relief to the staff that are there. Um, because we do understand that you know, this, is a, um, this situation is quite traumatic for, um, to everyone on the island, mm -hmm. um, literally. Um, tomorrow we have a team of um, of healthcare providers who will be traveling to the island early in the morning. Um, they will be working from the clinics. They will be offering patient care services, assessments, counseling, whichever, whatever support they can to the staff. It is what we can do for now. Um, a limited number, I believe, about three of them will be staying over in Karyaku. Um, the accommodations for them. It's, uh, it, it's not ideal, but they are willing to um, go the extra mile to ensure that we can provide for the needs of persons in Karyaku. We are trying to identify clients who have at-risk conditions and to facilitate their transfer to Grenada in a timely manner all right, to avoid having emergency situations occur overnight um, and having to, to, um, to transfer individuals. We've had to to um, rely on the services of the Coast Guard yesterday to um, do one such transfer very late in the, in, um, into the night, and we are really we are tremendously, um, uh, you know, thankful that the Coast Guard was able to um, to um, undertake this mission on behalf of um, of the patient and all the healthcare um, providers uh, involved. Um, in summary, the situation is challenging, but. We are committed to ensuring that we meet whatever challenges um, that are there. The staff on the ground in Karyaku are very committed persons. They are very committed persons. They are working under extreme pressures. And we are doing everything in our power to ensure that we provide them all of the support mm -hmm. that they need in order to continue functioning. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Charles. We will now hear from coordinator for NADMA, Dr. Terence Walters. Thank you very much and uh, <clears throat> good afternoon everyone. We continue our efforts uh, in response to Hurricane Beryl and the National Disaster Management Agency continues to, uh, to uh, coordinate the efforts, uh, relief efforts and so uh, the main thing here is receiving uh, relief items for distribution to the people of Karaku and PT Martinique and those who are significantly impacted uh, in the north of Grenada. Uh, all right, so we continue to uh, provide services to our people. Now, I will uh, call out a list of items that are required and we ask that if you want to contribute to the relief effort, that you please be guided by the list of items that I will be calling out. Please be guided. You can uh, deliver those items to us here at the National Disaster Management Agency and we will uh, ensure that these items get to the people of Karaku, Pichi Martinique, and uh, those who are uh, or those who need the items to the north of Grenada. So uh, the items required uh, bottled water, tarpaulins, uh, non-perishable food items, cots or, and sleeping blankets or sleeping bags, pillows, uh, batteries, hygiene kits for women, for men and for children, toiletries, uh, toilet paper and, and, and so forth, toiletries, first aid kits, hand sanitizers, sanitary napkins, baby pampers and wipes, uh, baby formula 
adult pampas, five gallon jerry cans, reflective vests, uh, collapsible water bladders, and these are the large water bladders. So, in case there's anyone from external, uh, if you're listening, uh, the collapsible water bladders are 3,000 gallons and uh, larger than that. Uh, also, we are um, saying uh, emergency solar or battery operated radios, flashlights, uh, solar lights, generators, chainsaws. chainsaws and we also want you to uh, provide spare chains if possible and we are looking for the larger chainsaws with the uh, blades 18 to about 32 inches uh, if you can uh, provide fuel cans uh, books and coloring books and items for children because we do understand that children who are in shelters over a long period uh, need to be engaged so we are asking if you have, if you do have items, you know, that uh, you think you can provide for children, please do so. And uh, then we would, we would also uh, release some, if you have uh, medical supplies. Now, the medical supplies, we would have to clear that with the Ministry of Health. And so we would ask that if you are going to contribute medical supplies, you will send us a list of the supplies and uh, then we will declare it with the Ministry of Health and then make a decision. So uh, the generators you're asking for is 2,000 watts and upwards. So 2,000 watts and upwards, that's the generators. Now we ask that you please be guided by the needs list or the priority needs list that I have just announced. Sometimes uh, when we're in, in, in a relief mode, uh, people tend to want to just, uh, you know, bring in items. And we understand that uh, and we appreciate that you, you want to give, you want to uh, supply and support. And because our brothers and sisters in Karaku, Piti Martinique and up north are hurting and you want to, to assist. But we ask that you please be guided by the needs of this because we do not want to receive items that we do not need and then it adds an additional burden on the system to have to sort these items and uh, you know find ways to store them and, uh, and and all of that so we're asking you to be guided by the needs list we appreciate your generosity we appreciate the fact that you want to help and we do not want to, to <clears throat> uh, prevent you from assisting or deny you that opportunity to assist but we do ask that you be guided by the needs list and the items that you supply is based on the needs list now as we go along the needs list will change and will be updated uh, there are some items that will be added some items that will be removed but we ask that the items that I have just announced and it will be circulated that you be guided by that needs list all right we do ask that you do that so we continue again we continue our efforts to uh, ensure that we provide relief for the people of Karaku, Piti Martinique and uh, those up north of Grenada <clears throat> or in the northern parishes of Grenada and we will continue our efforts to collaborate with the general population to ensure that we collect the items get it up to Karaku, Piti Martinique and ensure that the people of Karaku and Piti Martinique uh, that they can receive these items to make their lives even more comfortable at this difficult time that they're faced with. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Walters. We've been getting a lot of uh, calls about volunteering. Could you walk us through the process of volunteering? And we're also talking volunteering here at NADMA, whether it is in the, in the warehouse, the package items, or volunteering in Karku. Could you walk us through that process, please? All right, so people have been calling to volunteer in Karaku. Now, we, at this point, um, we still, the, the state of emergency remains in effect for Karaku and PT Martinique. And we, while we are happy to have people uh, want to volunteer or call us to volunteer, but we do not want to overwhelm the system in Karaku. We just want to remind that the people 
of Karakou and PG Martinique have been uh, impacted by a very dangerous a major category four hurricane. I visited Karakou and PG Martinique yesterday and I can tell you that the islands are devastated. So the people have been through a very difficult time and it's very early days most of the people are still in shock and they're trying to come to terms with what has happened. They are trying to come to terms with what has happened because this has not happened in uh, Karakou and Piti Martinique since uh, Hurricane Janet in 1955. We, are, we went through uh, Hurricane Ivan, and, uh, but, but Karakou and Piti Martinique were not impacted as Grenada was impacted, uh, mainland Grenada. So the people uh, almost or more than a generation, all right, have not experienced anything like that. And so they are uh, all in shock, all right? They are all in shock and uh, they have to take time to, you know, come to terms with what has happened and those who are required to work. So, for example, the health services staff, the disaster management staff, the police Force. These people are still required to work. They have been impacted. They have lost their homes. And it is a very difficult period for them. When we went yesterday, there was one member of staff in the disaster office who was working uh, since Saturday. And she only visited her home yesterday. She had not heard from her people in PT Matic because there's no, no communication. So she did not know what was happening in Piti Matnik and we brought her uh, home and when we were going into Piti Matnik, you know, she was pointing out to, to us uh, just a room left so her house was gone and she did not know that until yesterday. So it is a very difficult time for the people of Karakou and Piti Matnik and so we do not want to overwhelm them uh, by sending up um, volunteers are just sending volunteers because they are the ones now that will have the pressure to ensure that these volunteers are taken care of. So we ask you to be patient uh, as we need volunteers to send in. We will uh, let you know. We will let you know when it is that we need uh, you know, additional people for specific things. For example, today we uh, sent up three, a three-member team to provide psychosocial support at the emergency operation centers and, uh, or the emergency operation center and other areas. So that three-member team uh, went up to Karakou today for that. Dr. Charles mentioned that we have uh, medical teams going up on a daily basis. So we are, are going to provide, but we do not want you to, uh, to just go to Karakou because you'd be then using up the limited resources that they have, uh, water and food and all of that. And... And so while we're trying to get the people of Karakou back on their feet. So we thank you for your expressions uh, to volunteer. You can call us here at the National Disaster Management Agency, 440-8390. Let us know the area that you want to volunteer in, in Karakou and Piti Martinique. Tell us the area. We will take the information. And when the time is right, then we would alert you and send you up to Karakou and Piti Martinique if needs be. Again, 440-8390, you can call, uh, give us your name and uh, all, all information and the area. Because we, not, we do not want to just send people to Karakou uh, without any aim, all right? We want to ensure that if you're going to Karakou and Piti Matnik, you are going with a purpose. So you call, give us your name, give us your number, and tell us which area that you want to volunteer in, whether you want to go as a volunteer driver, as a volunteer chainsaw person, as a volunteer cook, whatever it is you want to do when you go to Karakou, please let us know that. So when we need people to go to Karakou for specific areas, we can call you and then we can say, this is what we want you to go to Karakou to do. So let us continue to support uh, the people of Karakou, Piti Martinique and those in the northern parishes. Let's continue to do what we can to support them. And uh, yes, you're making your contribution, so we ask you, to continue to do that. Thank you, Dr. Walters. You did talk about volunteering in Karakou, but how about volunteering here at the NADMA headquarters? 
Yes, if you uh, again, if you want to volunteer here at the NADMA headquarters, because there's quite, especially with the relief items, there are quite a lot of things that we need people to load trucks, offload trucks, um, package items at the warehouse, and so we will need volunteers. So please again give us your uh, call four four zero eight three nine zero. Give us your name, give us your number. Tell us what you want to volunteer to do. If you uh, if you show up, we would ask you uh, which area you want to volunteer. Because if you just come in and say, I want to volunteer, what, will, what do you want to do? What can you do? Which area can you fit in? All right? So we want to make sure that we have a good sense of what of the areas that you can fit in. Again, we need people to load trucks, offload trucks, uh, package items to send out uh, relief items. You know, uh, there are trucks taking items to the various boats to go up to Karakou and Piti Martinique. And we, we also have shelters still open. We need to send uh, trucks to these shelters uh, with food items. So there are quite a number of things uh, that, uh, that need to be done. So we ask and we, or we are thankful that you can volunteer. So give us a call, 440-8390. Thank you, Dr. Walters. We have two journalists online, Linda Straker and Michael Bascom. Linda Straker, you may proceed with your question at this time. Good afternoon and great to see everyone. Um, my first question is, maybe I don't know if Dr. Sean could answer. Um, I know data and information is changing as the days and the hours progress. What is the status of um, hurricane-related deaths? How, what is Grenada's count now? Linda, Doc, you want to take that one? Uh, yes, I can take that question. We have um, two registered deaths in Kariaku and one on the mainland, so total three. Right, so that figure has not changed. Because today I was seeing on social media that we had eight deaths, so I just wanted to clear that up. The, my other question, a few days ago, I think it was the last week, probably the week before, um, I saw a news item about the field hospital that was donated to Grenada um, just shortly with, within the COVID-19 period. Um, what is the status of that field hospital and would it be deployed um, in Karakou for, um, to deal with what is happening there now in Karakou, the field hospital? What is the status of it between, as it pertains to Karakou needing um, extended medical care? Well, maybe I can I can I can answer that one. Yes, the field hospital is um, is being considered as uh, one of the options uh, to address the situation in in, in Kariaku. Um, we are working on the logistics of preparing this, the the field hospital for for, for setup. Um, we are also working um, with an, with an, another organization who can assist us in um, manning the, 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 the field, uh, setting up and, and manning uh, a field hospital um, because, as I mentioned earlier, um, our staff are working under um, challenging conditions and uh, we would, you know, like to relieve them of, um, of some of, the, 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 of these challenges as, as, as much as possible. Um, but there's one additional thing I would say about about the field hospital. Uh, when it is set up, it will be um, a temporary solution until we get our main hospital, um, Princess Royal Hospital, up and functioning. Um, because as you would um, imagine, and as you would, um, you know, as you can, you know, figure out. We are in the hurricane season. Um, the field hospital is um, it's a, it's a, 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 a very advanced um, tent um, structure. And should we, I mean, we are at the, at the beginning of the hurricane season. And um, it would be expected that should we be facing another, another hurricane, um, it is highly likely that we would have to um, take down that facility um, if there is the potential for that storm to come this way because the, 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 the storm itself 
would be a, th a threat to the integrity of the field hospital. So in the interim to, to handle the acute um, situation, yes. Um, but it will have to be viewed in this context as a temporary solution while we work on uh, solving the issues, um, the damages that occurred at our, at our, at, at the Princess Royal Hospital. And uh, while we, we work, and, and we should be working as, you know, as, um, as quickly as possible mm -hmm. to address those. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, if I could just add a, an, another um, question, please. Um, Dr. Sean, can you tell us whether or not any babies was born under the, the, the period of the, of the hurricane mm -hmm. um, based on data from the hospital? And two, um, the, the Caracol Hospital, when it was officially commissioned following the rebuilding, the building, it was called a smart hospital able to deal with, um, to face the challenges of climate change. Stronger hurricanes is one of the challenges of, of, of um, climate change. What category of hurricane was this smart hospital designed to withstand, to the best of your knowledge? All right. Those are very interesting questions. As it relates to number of babies, I, I, don't, have that, I don't have that data. Um, I think I was. I, I received the signal that we had we had one baby um, born. Um, so I guess the answer is is one until I'm I'm able to verify whether there are others. Um, the hospital, uh, yes, you you are correct. The hospital went underwent renovations to make it a, a smart facility, and um, part of the objective was to ensure that it it um, can withstand. Um, you know, w significant um, weather events. I, I cannot tell you because I'm, I, I, I don't recall what category of hurricane um, it was uh, designed or retrofitted to, um, to, to withstand. Um, but what I can say is I, I, I visited Kariku myself and I saw the level of, of devastation that was caused. Uh, this was a significant uh, weather event. This was a significant hurricane um, that affected the island. And um, I am not, I, I, I'm not sure how many facilities can withstand um, such intensity of storms and emerge undamaged. Right. Um, obviously, um, this facility suffered some some damage um, um, following the storm. Um, it just it simply means that we we need to um, look at the engineering and maybe um, tweak and design um, more uh, to to avoid such events. Because if the storms are coming um, this in intense, then obviously um, we would need to look at the science behind how we design these these, these structures and maybe, um, uh, you know, work on improvements in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Sean. Uh, we have Michael Bascom online. Michael, if you have a question, you can proceed. Yes, thanks very much. Um, I, I, I had a question pending in the chat for a while, but it's not just about the fatalities, but um, what's about injuries and, and, and missing people? Uh, because I know even here in the diaspora, there are a number of people who have been trying to make contact with relatives, um, you know, back, especially in Karaku. Um, and also, it has to do with um, how are the, the needs of um, vulnerable populations, such as the, the, the elderly, children, people with disabilities, being addressed in the relief efforts. And um, one of the questions has to do with the information regarding relief efforts and available how is that information um regarding the relief efforts and available resources being disseminated to the affected people since many of them are without you know services like electricity and telecom services and things like that. all right um maybe i can answer the the last part uh, first about talking about information to the affected populations and so uh, on our visit to Karakou and Peter Martinique, 
we we had uh, two I think it was two yes two bullhorns in the uh, at the emergency operation center and so it was decided that in an effort to uh, provide information to people uh, these devices would be used uh, using the uh, the vehicles available so that you know they, you can go out and provide the information there was a, also um, discussion about the uh, there's a there was one radio station that they were looking at uh, doing an assessment to see if they can come back online but I can assure you that the people of uh, Karaku and PT Martinique are doing whatever is necessary to ensure that the people receive information required. You would appreciate that in those circumstances, uh, when everything is done, uh, it is it is it's difficult to provide uh, you know those services to provide information. But uh, the people will use whatever is available because it's what is available to them at this time. And so <clears throat> Nadma is working with NTRC and we have restored some level of communication with the emergency operation center direct from uh, Karaku to Grenada. That has been restored today and uh, we are also sending up additional radio equipment. I know our team went today to set up uh, some additional equipment where you, where you can you know, access Wi-Fi in certain areas. Uh, there was also a volunteer uh, set up Wi-Fi in certain areas so you can get information around. Uh, so uh, again, uh, people are very generous and are chipping in to ensure that we do what is necessary so that people can uh, you know, have information you can share with uh, the, outside, the outside world. And you mentioned um, people getting in touch with family and friends abroad. I know uh, some of that has been done yesterday when we visited. Uh, some people were able to you know, give us, provide us with numbers uh, so that we can call their loved ones to let them know that they are okay and that they are alive. And so with the additional information, that uh, the additional equipment placed on Karaku uh, and PD Martinique today, um, there would be additional access for people to get in touch with family and friends. All right, thank you, Dr. Walters. We have one um, other journalist online. You may proceed with your question. Michael, are you finished? Do you have another question? No, uh, just some clarity on the issue with the, um, the elderly and you know, people with disabilities and how you know, they're being addressed in the, in the relief efforts. So again, um, we, we will have special items for the elderly. Now, some people have indicated that they would like uh, some of the elderly citizens to come to Grenada to be with family and friends. And they, based on the, uh, what's happening in Karaku, they will make uh, special requests for items for the elderly and for children and, and other vulnerable populations. Uh, and we will continue to provide as much support as we can to these populations. So, uh, so it is, uh, it is an, an emerging situation. Uh, we continue to focus on the various groups and provide for them uh, as much as we can. Thank you, yes. Michael. All right, thanks very much. All right. Um, next question, please. Good uh, afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Um, Mr. Bascom asked one of my questions, but I have a question for Dr. Charles. Has there been, I know you spoke of the need to deal with the patients who have emergency situations, but has there been a need so far to transport any patients from Karakou to Grenada, emergency or not? Yes. So, yes, we, we did have um, uh, some transfers of patients, patients who suffered um, injuries, and, um, and patients with other emergency um, situations. Uh, in the immediate, I can, I can tell you of, of three, and um, these occurred, well, two of which occurred yesterday, and one which occurred over the night, just, just, um, just after uh, midnight. All right, thank you. Do you have a final question? All right, thank you. I'd like to ask a question, please. Sure, go um, ahead. Just clarity, um, Dr. Sean, can you say the, um, 
the ages of the persons who die and what are their sex, please? I do not, unfortunately, unfortunately I do not have that, um, that information. There, there, there is some information that we do not have um, entirely as yet because the situation as it relates to the communication with um, our stakeholders in Karyaku has not really improved that much. Um, we still have no communication at any of our health facilities, meaning no phone, no internet, no radio. All right, so there's, uh, there's a lot of information that we still do not have. The, con the communication is spotty um, at best. So, you know, there are details that I simply do not have and I, and I cannot give you because, um, because of this um, lack of communication. And you, the, you had mentioned about the field hospital. Where is the potential location to, um, to set it up? Well, that, is, uh, that one I do not have as well because I'm sure the team on the ground will be examining potential sites where this can be, this can be, um, be placed. But I do not have that information yet. All right, thank you, Dr. Charles. Um, there's another question here for you, Dr. Charles. What is the plan for rotating staff, nurses, doctors? Um, somebody did ask a question about the juvenile center in Bacalet. What is the plan for that? Okay, well, I'm not certain about the juvenile center. Um, we have considered um, different options for rotating staff, uh, in, uh, particularly in Karyoku, because this is where the um, focus of the devastation was, um, was and where most of our challenges lie. Um, the context of the situation is making it, is making it challenging. Um, we considered having staff um, travel to Karyoku um, daily, um, going up in the morning, working, returning to Grenada in the afternoon, and simply because of the lack of um, facilities to accommodate them in, in, um, in, in Karyaku. Um, that proved not very practical. Uh, we're still looking at different, uh, at different um, options. Uh, we're considering, uh, let's say the staff, I, I understand that the ferries will, will begin to, to operate. So we are considering having staff that would go up they would work a 24-hour hour shift and they would return the next day and um, other staff will follow. Um, these are options that are being considered. Now, there are other staff members who have familial re um, relations um, in Karyaku and they are willing to put up with some of the challenges that, um, that, you know, they, 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 that are existent in Karyaku. And um, wherever these staff come forward, and we've had um, um, several who have come forward, um, we, uh, we are willing to, to, to support them and to, uh, to allow them to, um, to go. And they, would, uh, they have taken the option to you know, um, tough it out with their family or, their, uh, or so. And, um, and we are supporting this as well. But we are looking at, 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 um, at every option uh, to address this um, situation. Thank you, Dr. Charles. And final question, uh, Arthur Pei, you can probably take this one. Uh, relief efforts for PT Martinique. A lot of talks about Karakou, but just give us some information on PT Martinique. Uh, in a nutshell, when we, you, when we talk about Karakou, we actually mention PT Martinique. But again, you know, we have to be very specific for persons who are sensitive in that area. Uh, but the relief effort, when we, when we send relief effort to Karakou, um, actually, there are boats that are visiting PT Martinique and dropping off, dropping off um, items there. So the relief item, relief um, distribution, actually, when we talk about Karakou, we do include PT Martinique as well. Okay, thank you. And just to round up uh, the discussion, the briefing this afternoon, uh, the quality of donated items, could you just reiterate what kind of items we're looking for and um, just summarize today's briefing? Thanks. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, we, we, we want to ensure that the items we provide to our citizens in this relief effort are items that are of good quality. So we'd rather uh, new items 
and uh, if it's used, uh, it must be in excellent condition. And so the food items that you're going to uh, deliver, please ensure that it has an expiry date of at least six months, at least six months. Uh, ensure that it has that sort of expiry date. And we want to urge you, please examine the items and uh, before you, you give us and that we get good quality items because the people that we are uh, giving them to our citizens, uh, brothers or sisters, citizens of Grenada, Karakou and Piti Martinique and we want to ensure that they are treated with dignity. Thank you, Dr. Walters. I believe we have one final question online. Michael, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Um, are any specific areas in Karakou and Piti Martinique receiving priority, prioritized aid or or assistance due to severe damage or some higher need. I know it's a small community, but are there areas that receiving, you know, pri you know, priority assistance? So, Michael, it is uh, again. It is very early days uh, for this event. Uh, this event occurred on Monday, uh, Tuesday we visited, and today is Wednesday. Now, from what we have seen, from what we have seen. The entire islands of Karakou and Piti Martinique were devastated by the storm. So it's not a case like Grenada where the north uh, received some damage and the south uh, received much less damage. But it, the, it, because the eye of the storm passed through that area, it devastated the entire islands of Karakou and Piti Martinique. So from my observation, I mean, we, we are going to do the, the, uh, the damage assessment, okay, um, over the next few days. But from what I saw, from my assessment, both islands, all over the islands, because I went around uh, the both islands yesterday, right? So all, all the islands, both of them, all over. So we cannot prioritize and say, well, okay, north or south, but the entire islands of Karakou and Piti Martinique were devastated and all of the islands uh, require priority. Prioritize everywhere. Cheers, cheers. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Dr. Walters. I also want to say thank you to Arthur Pear and our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sean Charles. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We see you again at 9 o'clock. We will get an update from St. Patrick and St. Mark at 9 o'clock. So join us then for more updates post-hurricane burial. Have a good evening.